Bandra Jaisekara Samaka. A very good morning to you. You are joining us with a special edition of the Patikata program this morning. As you are aware, Sri Lanka has been a part of the UN peacekeeping mission for a, over a long time. And today we have the honor and the privilege of talking to the first commander of the multidimensional integrated mission in Mali, Lieutenant General Dennis Gillenspo, who is a Swedish national who is in the country at the moment. And we were able to have a quick chat with him before he left the island. A very good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you. Thank, Thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us. My pleasure. Sir, um, let me at the outset ask you, here in Sri Lanka, we are aware, uh, people are aware, the general public are aware that uh, there is a UN peacekeeping mission uh, going on, and the Sri Lankan soldiers are a part of this uh, UN peacekeeping mission. Uh, but maybe what they're not aware of is the extent of the services that you provide to the region, especially in your case, you are the force commander mm -hmm. of the mission, mission in Mali. Mali. Uh, before we get into uh, the details of uh, what is happening there, can you give us a little outline of what you as the force commander and what the UN peacekeeping mission is doing in Mali. Mali is, is uh, centrally located in the Sahel region and the whole Sahel region uh, it suffers now from insecurity, instability uh, and uh, we are uh, in country to provide support to the government to make sure that uh, it can uh, implement uh, the peace accord uh, with the signatory parties. Uh, and we are there to, to make sure that uh, the conditions are right. Uh, the force is, of course, uh, focused on security uh, and uh, supporting the Malian armed forces in, in many ways. But also, I would like to emphasize uh, to provide security to the population uh, in, in case of need. So, uh, doing our, carrying out a project of this nature is uh, definitely not an easy task. You're not dealing with just the military of your nation, home nation, uh, Sweden, but militaries, uh, military personnel, officers, soldiers from other countries as well. And uh, thereby, this is why it becomes the UN peacekeeping force. How do you find that? Does it, is it a challenge that you had to accept, or is it easy working with other nations? How do you cope with the forces that are with you? Well, we are some 55 nations uh, that uh, make up uh, the force. Uh, I, I must say I'm, I'm very proud and humbled of having that responsibility. Uh, it is a strength uh, to have this diversity of countries, traditions, experiences. Uh, but it, there are also some, some challenges and language being one of them because we, we have uh, a lot of uh, nationalities that uh, uh, lack uh, a common denominator in a common language. Uh, but uh, the, the positive aspects uh, overweight and, and uh, uh, we see that we have a number of Asian countries uh, being a, uh, form a key contribution. We have a number of, of uh, African countries from uh, Western Africa, uh, from the neighboring countries in particular, that provides its certain unique characteristics and also uh, countries from uh, from Europe and, and uh, Northern uh, America that have a different tradition of, of doing uh, military operations. And all this comes together in MINUSMA in a unique way and uh, we have uh, we have managed uh, to take advantage uh, of this uh, uh, in, in, a, in a good way. It's a synergy, uh, but we need to work on it all the time. Uh, and uh, Sri Lanka fits in very well in this equation. As you said, sir, when it comes to uh, countries uh, that are uh, in the United Nations peacekeeping force, some countries are having advanced technology when it comes to warfare matters, uh, tactical knowledge. Uh, countries uh, that are maybe uh, having less tactical knowledge and advancements can maybe learn from these countries. Is there, is there that uh, how do I call it, the sharing of uh, resources and maybe uh, tactical knowledge and things like uh, when another army can learn from another army happen in the United Nations Peacekeeping Force? It, it takes place uh, on a daily basis uh, and uh, to me the equipment is not the important part uh, mm -hmm. to, to make up uh, a capable force. It's the mindset, it's the fighting spirit, uh, the morale uh, or the force that uh, is the most important aspect. Uh, so it, it doesn't uh, necessarily mean that uh, the forces that with the most uh, state-of-the-art equipment will be, be the ones that perform the best. When it comes to uh, 
Sri Lanka, we just heard the news uh, that two of our soldiers who were on duty uh, in the Mali peacekeeping force passed away and you are also here in our country uh, to bring the remains of these uh, soldiers to our motherland. Uh, I want to, before we go into the details of that, I want to ask you the Sri Lankan involvement in the peacekeeping force. Uh, as I said at the outset, uh, the general public of our country are aware of uh, the fact that Sri Lanka is a part of the UN peacekeeping force, but uh, the missions and how Sri Lanka is actually a part of it is uh, not maybe available to the general public. So uh, my question to you is, uh, actually when it comes to the involvement, how big of an important role does uh, Sri Lanka play with the UN peacekeeping force? Well, first of all, let me express my condolences uh, to Sri Lanka uh, and also in particular to the families and friends of, of the fallen soldiers. Uh, it's uh, important for me to be here, uh, to pay respect uh, for, for uh, the work that they have been doing. Uh, the Sri Lankan force in Mali uh, has uh, as a key uh, task to make sure that uh, the logistics flow to different camps uh, are uh, being managed, uh, that we can transport uh, supplies to the different camps. And, and uh, bearing in mind that uh, Mali is a country uh, that, is, uh, uh, that has limited infrastructure, uh, uh, it makes it a challenge to sustain the force. Mm -hmm. And sustaining the force is a prerequisite for supporting the peace accord. So there is a direct link from the soldiers of, of Sri Lanka to actually making sure that we can support and, and make a difference in terms of implementing the peace accord. This, the Sri Lankan soldiers uh, on a daily basis, they go out uh, on uh, convoys and the threat is imminent. Uh, and uh, so every, every convoy that they undertake uh, they have to assume that uh, they will be exposed and uh, possibly attacked also. And that's the environment they're working on, under. And they, they've done this in a very proficient way. Uh, they are known to be uh, team workers together with other units and uh, very, very reliable as a partner and uh, very professional. Uh, when it comes to uh, this uh, recent incident where two of our soldiers passed away, uh, we know here, as I mentioned earlier as well, that uh, we are aware of uh, the matter that the uh, UN peacekeeping force happens, but what are the numbers that we are looking at in terms of our forces there? The numbers of attacks? Or? No, uh, the number of soldiers who are actually a part of the UN peacekeeping force currently. We have the contingent now uh, with, uh, with uh, the convoy unit and we also have some staff officers also. Uh, so the, the, no, the action numbers may vary uh, at times, uh, but I'd like to emphasize that uh, uh, the forces, uh, uh, including the Sri Lankan, they are being targeted by, by some of these terrorist groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, under these circumstances, uh, they're doing a very, very good job and uh, uh, under very tough uh, circumstances. We have to also uh, recognize the efforts of uh, the other nations as well. So in terms of uh, the countries that are actually helping us with the UN peacekeeping forces uh, along with Sri Lanka, uh, what can you say about the other member nations? Well, uh, this is, uh, I think, one, one of the privilege that I have to see how these nations come together. Sri Lanka provides uh, logistics convoys, others do patrolling. Uh, some others make sure that we have surveillance uh, that can support patrols and so on. So there are all bits and pieces in a big puzzle that uh, make up uh, the force that is now around 13,000 soldiers uh, on the ground. Uh, so so uh, uh, we, we're trying to take care and make sure that uh, all the capabilities that we have, all the nation's uh, forces, are made uh, available in the, in the way that fits their, their background, uh, their characteristics. If I'm to ask you, with, with regard to, uh, you are the force commander of uh, the peacekeeping force in Mali, with regard to your specific mission, and with regard to, in the past we've seen a lot of you yourself have been a part of uh, several other missions as well, why is the UN peacekeeping force important to the world, if, in your opinion? Uh, there is nothing uh, else uh, that could replace the United Nations. 
Uh, and one, one of the key characteristics I want to point out is the fact that it's not just uh, the military force that the UN uh, provides in Mali, in other conflicts as well. We have a substantial amount of uh, civilian efforts that work in close coordination uh, with the military. So we can create that synergy, making sure that uh, we provide security for the civilian uh, uh, components so they can do their work. Uh, so uh, that's, that's a unique feature for the United Nations. Uh, and uh, also I'd like to add the credibility that comes with uh, the Blue Berets uh, and uh, what the values uh, of the United Nations represent. You also spoke about uh, certain challenges when it comes to the languages. Uh, what other challenges do you face? Now, you said there is a ground force of 13,000 uh, soldiers. It is definitely not easy to be the force commander of 13,000 people, not just from one country, but countries around the world who have agreed to come and be a part of the United Nations peacekeeping. I'm sure there are other challenges more than the language barrier. There are. Uh, uh, Mali is a huge country, uh, so we are dispersed in the country. Uh, and uh, the forces, uh, generally, they, they deploy for a one-year rotation. So. Uh, there is a uh, difficult to, to make sure that uh, the soldiers are proud of the achievements that mm. have been taking place in, in Mali uh, that uh, is a result of their predecessors. So I want the soldiers to be proud and recognize the progress that we have been a part of. And that, that's significant. Uh, the signatory parties of the peace accord, uh, they don't fight anymore. And that, that's uh, something that we have played a key role in. Mm. Now we have other challenges, but uh, we, have, we have definitely uh, uh, delivered on one of the key elements of the peace accord. So another key point when it comes to the United Nations peacekeeping force and United Nations matters as a whole is that there is, like there is the positive side, there is a lot of criticism raised against the UN peacekeeping force as well with regard to whether you're actually needed in those places. So a message to if I am to ask you a message to these criticizers, in your opinion, a person who is commanding a force of 13,000 uh, soldiers in Mali, a country uh, that is foreign to both of us, uh, do you think the availability of the UN peace, peace, peacekeeping force in that country is actually making a difference? I'm convinced that we are making a difference. We are making a difference on a daily basis. We have uh, forces uh, located at the population centers they ensure that there is a degree of stability, a, de a degree of predictability, and also a reassurance uh, to the populations. Uh, and uh, without uh, our forces, the security situation in Mali would look fundamentally different. With that, we have to go in for a short commercial break. We are in discussion about the UN peacekeeping force and its mission in Mali. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Bandura Jai Sekara Samaka Atikata Bandura Jai Sekara Samaka Welcome back to this special edition of Patikada. We are in discussion with the force commander of the UN peacekeeping force in Mali. And we have been discussing about the UN peacekeeping force activities and with regard to the two Sri Lankan soldiers who passed away on duty in Mali. I want to focus the attention of uh, our public uh, with regard to this particular incident as well. Now, we spoke about the Sri Lankan involvement, the, the fact that we are in uh, pr provision of logistics in the UN peacekeeping force uh, in, with regard to this uh, project in Mali. Uh, I want to also so ask you uh, now, when it comes to a country like Mali, obviously when a peacekeeping force of the United Nations comes here, how uh, different or how accommodating are the people of Mali with regard to the services that you provide? Uh, they are uh, very appreciative of the United Nations in general uh, and uh, they uh, recognize our soldiers, in particular in those areas uh, where we had the opportunity to engage directly with the, with the population. And uh, th this gives us an opportunity also to, to explain what we are doing in the country. Uh, so we are well received uh, in many ways and, uh, and recognized uh, as uh, a, an effort to, to bring security and stability to the country. So as 
the force commander, you personally came down to Sri Lanka to hand over the remains of the two Sri Lankan soldiers. I want to focus uh, the attention on this particular incident as well. How often or how frequent are attacks on the UN peacekeeping force to the extent uh, where there are fatalities? Well, <clears throat> we have uh, on a weekly basis uh, attacks uh, by IEDs or that we discover IEDs. So every week there will be some kind of uh, an IED engagement. Uh, in some cases we detect them, uh, in some cases we have uh, light injuries, uh, but uh, this uh, attack uh, uh, that we experienced now uh, was, uh, was a lethal one and very re regrettably so. Uh, so uh, I've been a, a commanding officer of this force uh, since October uh, and uh, we've had uh, 17 fatalities uh, since I came into to, uh, the mission. With regard to this incident where two of our soldiers uh, passed away, can you explain to us what has actually happened? They uh, uh, conducted a convoy in uh, and passed an area which uh, has been known uh, to be uh, difficult uh, in terms of IEDs. Uh, the day before uh, this convoy uh, passed, we had uh, another uh, IED attack in the same uh, area. Uh, and at that time, uh, we had uh, soldiers from, from uh, Burkina Faso uh, injured. Uh, and uh, only a day after uh, the attack on, on the Sri Lankan soldiers, we had uh, forces, Malian forces attacked in the same region. So this is a, a, an area which is very difficult and uh, uh, they conducted uh, this convoy uh, according uh, to the procedures uh, and uh, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to, to manage. Uh, this is an ongoing uh, fight in terms of, of uh, becoming unpredictable and, and uh, changing our behavior so that uh, the enemy uh, don't know how we will respond uh, and we, we will continue to work on those procedures and learn from this uh, this attack. Uh, it was important for me to come here uh, to, to acknowledge uh, the work but also to, to tell uh, uh, the people of Sri Lanka that uh, these uh, victims uh, and these casualties uh, are not in vain. We will continue with determination uh, to fight uh, these terrorists and to make sure that uh, uh, we, we ha handle the security situation even better in the future. And the ID threat uh, is something uh, that we take very seriously. We will take additional measures uh, to, to counter uh, the ID threat. So when it comes to uh, your mission uh, in Mali, how far ahead are you? Obviously there needs to be, uh, the United Nations comes with the solutions. Uh, with the, it's not just the UN peacekeeping force there. UN has other arms that are operating as well. So with regard to the extent that you are available, uh, you are able to tell us how controlled is the situation in Mali or is it still in the process of being controlled? It's controlled in the sense that uh, the signatory parties, they sit around the table, they discuss and they, they have no hostilities uh, uh, between them. Uh, so th there is progress. Uh, the, the disturbing uh, fact in uh, Mali right now is that uh, there are a number of, of uh, criminal uh, and uh, violent groups uh, that disrupt security uh, and uh, they target uh, the UN forces as well as other forces in country uh, and uh, uh, and the civilian population as well so it's it's a it's a complex situation with ma many different uh, armed groups uh, with different agendas uh, that uh, operates in the country so once again uh, when it comes to uh the military of uh, Mali when it comes to uh, working hand in hand with the Malian government. Uh, it's definitely not once again easy to come up with a force of 13,000 uh, people and uh, work hand in hand with a military that is uh, having a fight already going on in the country with regard to the political situation uh, there and, and a lot of turmoil as we, re as we uh, hear on the media as well. So when it comes to the support of the government of Mali with regard to the peacekeeping force there, 
you as the force commander, how do you feel uh, the connection between the two parties, the UN, the UN peacekeeping force, as well as the Malian government? We have a very close cooperation, uh, and uh, uh, we develop uh, plans uh, in close cooperation. We exchange uh, information, and in particular, when we have casualties and attacks, we support each other. Uh, so uh, this cooperation is uh, very much appreciated, I think, from, from, from both sides. So when it comes to uh, Sri Lanka, uh, we as a country, I'm sure the army and the president of our country will also in the future uh, want to be a part of the UN peacekeeping force as well. And uh, they will definitely extend the support as we have in the past. We have heard the UN peacekeeping force uh, missions going from here to various countries in the past as well. So a message to uh, the Sri Lankan military, the armed forces, if I'm to ask you with regard to the service that you provide in the world, wherever it is, when there is a requirement of the United Nations peacekeeping force, uh, US the force commander and the UN has not failed to uh, answer those uh, uh, incidents and they have been there. Uh, and Sri Lanka will continue to be a part of it, I'm sure. So a message, if I'm to ask you, for the Sri Lankan armed forces as well. Well, uh, the Sri Lankan armed forces uh, contributes uh, with uh, skilled uh, officers, skilled soldiers, and uh, with determination and uh, with some key capabilities. Uh, and it's important for the United Nations to have uh, many countries represented because it's not just about the military capability, it's also to demonstrate the commitment of the international community. And in, a, in an operation in uh, Western Africa, having countries like Sri Lanka uh, involved, it sends a strong message uh, of the commitment that you have uh, towards in, uh, international peace and security. When it comes to, again, when it comes to the situation, uh, the UN peacekeeping force has not been limited to incidents in the African continent whenever there is uh, humanitarian assistance required around the world. Uh, the UN has been there and uh, what assurance can you as the force commander give us if Sri Lanka is one day in need of the United Nations peacekeeping force, be it for disaster situation, humanitarian assistance, what assurance can you give us that you will be there? Well, uh, I, I cannot give any assurance uh, because that's, that's up to the Security Council to, to decide uh, on commitments. But uh, uh, I think uh, looking back uh, to the history of the UN and its support uh, for nations under stress, uh, I think it's a compelling uh, record uh, that, has, uh, that has been produced. Uh, and. Uh, the purpose of the United Nations is, is to be there for countries uh, that will require support and assistance. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm convinced that the United Nations would look into any of these uh, situations uh, with, with great uh, priority if that uh, arises. Where can uh, Sri Lanka develop with regard to uh, the participation and the support extended? towards the UN peacekeeping force, where can uh, the Sri Lankan uh, soldiers who are, be, uh, who are being a part of this peacekeeping force develop in terms of uh, working forward with the UN peacekeeping force? I think as, as any other uh, peacekeeping force, uh, uh, Sri Lanka uh, should follow uh, the developments in peacekeeping. Uh, uh, and uh, the way peacekeeping has been done in, in traditionally is about to change. and. Uh, the security situation in Mali testifies of, of a, a new uh, new security condition that we have to deal with, uh, being targeted uh, as, as, uh, as one of those aspects. Uh, also operating uh, alongside other uh, military forces, not just the national. In Mali we have uh, uh, a regional cooperation, G5 Sahel, that also is active in the country. We have a European Union training mission uh, in the country and also French forces working there. Uh, so all, all these uh, military efforts have to, to work, find uh, ways to work together. And uh, that's also, I think, uh, uh, a new feature in peacekeeping. It goes without saying that the task that you do is of very serious nature. Uh, again, 
uh, in a different country on foreign soil with uh, soldiers of other countries going in there. So uh, we also heard of a situation where a Sri Lankan soldier was also implicated in a war crime situation uh, with regard to the UN peacekeeping force as well. How seriously do you take these? Because obviously uh, more than uh, a country is being looked at in that way, you're representing not just one country but the United Nations as a whole. So obviously you will have to take action and take serious attention towards the war crimes aspect as well. How do you tackle that challenge? In the UN system, there is a vetting process before the forces uh, come into, in this case, to Mali. So uh, uh, that is supposed to have been taken care of before I receive the troops. Mm. Uh, and uh, if there are any additional input, uh, uh, New York and the UN headquarters is managing it. So my role is to execute and to make sure that uh, the decisions made in New York uh, will be implemented, whether it will be a repatriation or not. But from, from a UN perspective, of course, human rights violations are uh, of fundamental importance. Uh, when it comes to uh, situations uh, like uh, this particular situation where you're the force commander, Mali has received a lot of attention uh, and that is why the UN is also trying to solve the situation there. Uh, you are not operating in isolation. Everyone is looking at you uh, in terms of be it the media, be it the political forces. All attention is towards you when a UN peacekeeping force moves into a country. So isn't that a challenge to you as well? Or do you, do you find that a guiding light to do the right thing all the time? Well, I feel that uh, there are a lot of expectations on us uh, from the international community and uh, also a lot of interest and, and I see this as, uh, as uh, positive signs of commitment and determination uh, from the international community. Uh, we, we, we are being scrutinized uh, and uh, there will for sure come out uh, positive things of that because we can improve uh, the force as well uh, and uh, we will also uh, get uh, changed uh, tasks because of, of uh, this commitment and uh, uh, the changed, uh, changed security environment. So, so uh, this is something positive. I think ev every force commander would like that uh, attention to, to, uh, to its operations, even though uh, one may feel that uh, there are some, some details uh, that are being looked at. But in general, this is very positive. And, uh, and the commitment, I think, also is felt by the soldiers that uh, we have visitors coming in. They want to know, politicians, they want to know what's happening. They want to know uh, the facts on the ground. And that, that's the, the best acknowledgment that, that we are doing something important. Thank you very much, uh, Lieutenant General Gillens, for, for being here with us and talking to us today about the UN uh, peacekeeping mission in Mali and with regard to the passing away of uh, two of our Sri Lankan soldiers who were on duty in Mali. It was definitely an interesting chat and thank you uh, once again uh, for the services that you render on behalf of uh, the Sri Lankan community as well. Uh, that's all we have for you this morning from uh, the Patikada program, an interesting chat indeed with the force commander of the UN peacekeeping force in Mali. That's all we have for today. Thank you very much for watching. We'll join you again. Andhra Jaisekara Samka